Welcome to the New York State Seal of Biliteracy Guidance Toolkit, Module Number 1. This toolkit represents a collaboration between the New York State Education Department and the Mid-State and Midwest Arburns, the Regional Bilingual Educational Resource Networks, to support schools in beginning the process of implementation of the Seal of Biliteracy. The modules contained in this toolkit are designed as a self-guiding process for individual schools or those who wish to work together in a consortium. They can be viewed in a sequence or individually to brush up on a particular topic. Each module consists of an agenda, a PowerPoint, and various supporting documents and exemplars. Schools are encouraged to use these documents for their promotional materials as well as for internal and external communications. The entire toolkit is available online on the OBEWL Seal of Biliteracy website. For more information on starting a Seal of Biliteracy program at your school or for any questions regarding the Seal, please contact Candace Black at C-A-N-D-A-C-E dot B-L-A-C-K at N-Y-S-E-D dot G-O-V. My name is Candace Black and I will be your guide for this module. Module 1, Getting Started, is an overview of the Seal of Biliteracy program, providing the essential information for any school exploring or beginning the process of planning for or implementing the Seal of Biliteracy. Let's start with the module objectives. By the end of this module, participants will be able to do the following. Give an overview about what the Seal of Biliteracy is to a prospective student, parent, teacher, administrator, or community member. Provide a reason why schools should consider creating a Seal of Biliteracy program for their students. Explain at least two of the criteria that a student could meet to earn the Seal at their school. Explain the basic timeline for schools to develop a Seal program. Give an example of a potential culminating project for world languages or English based on criteria 1E or 2E and name two of the four required forms that must be submitted electronically to the Office of Bilingual Education and World Languages for the SEAL. Whether you are a SEAL of Biliteracy Committee or a consortium of regional schools exploring the SEAL, please stop the recording and have each person present themselves giving the following information. Their name, their school or organization if appropriate, their role, one thing they know about the SEAL, and one thing they hope to gain from this module series. The Seal of Biliteracy is an award given by a school, school district, or county office of education that formally recognizes students who have attained a high level of proficiency in two or more world languages, one of which must be English, by high school graduation. The SEAL is awarded by the Commissioner to students who meet the criteria established by the Board of Regents and who attend schools that voluntarily agree to participate in the program. The SEAL must be made available to all students who meet the required criteria at no cost to the student. The SEAL sticker provided by NYSED to schools at no charge each year is affixed to the student's diploma and is noted on the student's official high school transcript and on the graduation program. So now that we know what the SEAL is, let's talk about why New York offers the SEAL of Biliteracy. The SEAL acknowledges the importance of being bilingual in today's global society. It highlights the hard work and achievement of students and encourages them to pursue language study while in school. The recognition of attaining biliteracy becomes part of the high school transcript and diploma as a statement of accomplishment for future employers and for college admission. Why do schools offer the seal of biliteracy? To encourage the study of languages, having a seal program has the potential to increase enrollment in upper level world language courses as students see the value in continuing their studies of a world language through high school to recognize the value of language diversity. There are over 200 languages spoken by students in New York State. Students can earn the seal in any of these languages. To provide employers with a method of identifying people with language skills. 
The demand for bilingual workforce is on the rise in our increasingly globalized society. Students who wish to develop a proficiency in more than one language will be more marketable. To provide universities with a method to recognize and give credit to applicants for attainment of high-level skills in multiple languages. The SEAL uses the nationally recognized ACTIFL proficiency levels, which make it easy for colleges across the nation to evaluate students' applications. To prepare students with 21st century skills, the communication skills and cultural competence developed by the SEAL are essential to effectively work with diverse populations. To honor the multiple cultures and languages in a community. Because students can obtain the SEAL in any language, it encourages the development of home language skills, honoring the knowledge of our heritage language students. Students who earn the SEAL of Biliteracy positively contribute to the district's accountability score, for ESSA. To better understand the SEAL, let's take a look at its evolution in New York State from the beginning. The SEAL of Biliteracy was passed by the legislature and signed into law by Governor Cuomo in 2012. In 2014, the New York State Board of Regents approved the implementation of a SEAL of Biliteracy pilot program in a limited number of districts to inform the final set of criteria that would be established for all schools. The criteria for students to earn the Seal of Biliteracy was formally approved by the Board of Regents in 2016. The first full year of full statewide implementation of the Seal was 2016-2017. As of the publication of this module, 40 states plus the District of Columbia currently offer a state-approved Seal of Biliteracy. California was the first state to establish a program in 2008 followed by New York in 2012. More information on Seal of Biliteracy programs in other states can be found on the website sealofbiliteracy.org. In 2019 20, there were 294 schools that offered a Seal of Biliteracy program. This represents one in every five New York State public schools. The growth of the New York State Seal of Biliteracy program has been substantial since its beginning in 2015-16 with only 14 pilot schools. Each year, we have seen a significant increase in the number of schools offering this program. The Seal of Biliteracy is offered in every region of our state as shown in this graph. This graph shows the number of schools currently offering the Seal of Biliteracy in blue followed by the number of schools in that region that do not currently offer the SEAL in orange. We can see that while the SEAL is offered in a number of schools in each region, there is significant potential for growth. Every region of our state has seen significant growth each year in the number of schools offering the SEAL. In 2019-20, over 40 600 students earned the New York State Seal of Biliteracy. As with the number of schools offering the seal, we've also seen significant growth in the number of students earning the seal each year. It is important to note that this number increased by more than 500 students from last year, despite the COVID-19 related school closures. Since the very first Seal of Biliteracy program was offered in 2015-16, more than 12,000 New York State students have earned this award. The graph on this slide illustrates the breakdown of students earning the Seal of Biliteracy in the 2019-20 academic year by their L status. Student data is currently disaggregated into English language learners or Ls, former or ever Ls, and never Ls. The term L is used to refer to those students identified as having language acquisition needs pursuant to Part 154 of the Commissioner's Regulations. The term former or ever L is used to refer to students who were previously identified as Ls, but who have since exited L status by achieving the appropriate level of English proficiency as evidenced by their NISISLAT score. The term never L is used to refer to students who were never identified as having language acquisition needs pursuant to Part 154 of the Commissioner's Regulations. Each year, we have seen an increase in the number of students from all L status categories, with the exception of Ls, in 2019-20. It is our belief that COVID-19-related school closures 
had a particularly strong negative impact on this most vulnerable population, which is reflected in this number. We will continuously strive to increase the total number of students earning the SEAL with a focus on supporting ELLs through the process. In 2019-20, students earned the New York State Seal of Biliteracy in 59 different languages, including our very first candidate in an indigenous language, Tuscarora. This represents an increase of 12 additional languages from last year. The most common languages in which students completed the SEAL last year were Spanish, French, Italian, Chinese, German, Latin, American Sign Language, Arabic, Russian, and Bengali. Students may earn the Seal of Biliteracy in English and any number of other world languages. To earn the Seal of Biliteracy in more than one world language in addition to English, students must earn three points according to the criteria in each language. In 2019-20, 80 students earned the Seal in two world languages in addition to English and three students earned it in three world languages in addition to English. Let's start with a suggested timeline to implement the New York State Seal of Biliteracy program at the school level. Viewers can find this timeline document on the same website on which this video was found under Module 1. The timeline displayed on this slide is provided as a general guideline for implementation. However, schools may adjust their timelines to fit their own needs. The timeline covers five stages, planning, recruitment, implementation, calibration, and reflection. Within each stage, a variety of key tasks are outlined to keep each school on track towards their end goal of offering the seal of biliteracy. Months, or a range of months, are listed for each task based on the OBEWL deadlines for various forms. Please stop the recording and take a few minutes to review the timeline and reflect on what this might look like at your school. Module 1 focuses on the planning stage. In this stage, schools will focus on the formation of the SEAL of Biliteracy Committee, learning about the handbook, and communication about the SEAL program to various stakeholder groups. The first task of the SEAL of Biliteracy Committee is to familiarize themselves with the New York State SEAL of Biliteracy Handbook. Viewers can find the handbook on the general NYSED SEAL of Biliteracy homepage. If you haven't already, it is recommended that this handbook be distributed to and read thoroughly by all members of the SEAL of Biliteracy Committee. This handbook contains all of the information a school needs in order to implement a SEAL program and is updated regularly. For any questions that arise that aren't covered in the current handbook, committee members are encouraged to reach out to Candace Black at candace.black at nysid.gov or their local Regional Bilingual Education Resource Network or Arburns. A list of these Arburns is included at the end of this presentation. There are four required forms that must be submitted over the course of each year in which schools offer a SEAL of Biliteracy program. They are the school notification form, which is due by December 1st, the culminating project form, which is due by April 15th, the SEAL request form, which is due by May 31st, and the end of year data form, which is also due by May 31st. Each form will be explained in a subsequent slide and will be covered in detail in the modules that follow. The school notification form is an online form in which the school communicates its intention to offer the SEAL in the current school year and provides a variety of data on the student body and the eligible students who might pursue the SEAL. This form must be submitted by December 1st of each school year in which the school wishes to offer the SEAL even if no information has changed since the prior year. Because a significant amount of data is required for this form, a template is provided for SEAL of Biliteracy coordinators to print out in order to gather the data prior to entering on the online form. This form may only be submitted electronically via the completion of the online form. OBEWL will not accept emailed copies of the form template. The culminating project form is an online form in which the school indicates when, where, and in which languages the student presentations for the SEAL will take place. 
This form must be submitted by April 15th of each school year. OBEWL will select a few schools from each region each year and will attend some of the student presentations to provide support and feedback on this process. Only schools who have offered the seal for at least two years will be selected. Schools who are selected for such a visit will be notified no later than April 30th. While schools are still under hybrid or remote instruction, visits will be scheduled virtually. The SEAL request form is an online form in which the school provides the number of SEAL stickers and medallions requested, the school address to which they should be sent, and the date by which they are needed. This form is recommended to be submitted by May 31st of each school year in which the school wishes to offer the SEAL. However, the deadline is flexible. For instance, a school may choose to conduct their student presentations after the end of classes in June. In this case, the school would submit an anticipated SEAL request form before the deadline and then submit an amended SEAL request form, if the information is changed, after the final presentations have been completed. This allows NYSED to send the required number of SEALs and medallions to the school in order to prepare for graduation ceremonies. It is important for schools to work backwards from the date they will give out the SEALs and medallions to students and to allow at least one week's processing time from the date of request. The end of year data form is an Excel spreadsheet on which schools will enter the information on each student that has successfully met the criteria to earn the seal. Once complete, this Excel spreadsheet should be emailed to obewldocsubmit at nysed.gov. That's OBEWL doc submit at nysid.gov. OBEWL will not accept PDFs of this form. This form is recommended to be submitted by May 31st of each school year in which the school wishes to offer the SEAL along with the SEAL request form. In the example given previously, if a school does not complete their student presentations until after the deadline, it is recommended that they submit an anticipated end-of-year data form by May 31st and then to follow up with an amended form after student presentations are complete. Once both the correctly filled out seal of request form and the end-of-year data form are submitted, OBWL will then mail out the seal stickers and medallions. Please take out the seal notification form template. Let's look at the data that will be required to gather to fill out this form. One of the first tasks of the SEAL of Biliteracy Committee is to identify the subgroups of eligible SEAL candidates from the graduating senior class. These are current L's, former or ever L's, never L's whose home language is English, and never L's whose home language is other than English. Let's take a look at each subgroup. Current L's are those currently enrolled in an English as a New Language or ENL program. You'll see the notification form asks for current L's who are seniors and who scored at least expanding on the most recent NICE slot exam or who have earned a point towards Criterion 1A or 1B through a 2020 exemption. The rationale behind expanding level is that the student must be at a reasonable starting level to be able to achieve commanding status by graduation. Current L's who are seniors with little to no English proficiency may need more than a year in order to reach the commanding level. This is why it is recommended that schools work with their L's as early as possible so that they have the support necessary to earn the seal of biliteracy. When considering this subgroup of seal candidates, it is also important to note that to be eligible to pursue the seal of biliteracy, current L's must be able to speak, understand, read, and write their home or native language, as candidates will have to perform in all four skill areas at the intermediate high level. For students who can speak and understand their home or native language, but who are not yet proficient in reading or writing it, the school is encouraged to seek out supports in the student's home or native language. Our next subgroup is former or ever L's. They are students who have successfully exited an ENL program. 
They have reached the commanding level of proficiency in English and must also be able to speak, understand, read, and write their home or native language. Just as with current L's, the school is encouraged to determine if their former or ever L's might benefit from supports in their home or native language. Our third subgroup is never L's whose home language is English and who are seniors that completed or are completing a world language course sequence culminating in checkpoint C. Historically, these students make up about 70% of SEAL candidates. Our final subgroup is never L's whose home language is other than English and who are seniors. These students, while never having been identified as English language learners, are able to speak, understand, read, and write a language other than English through their heritage or experience abroad. This information can be gathered through the school's student management system and in consultation with world languages and English as a new language teachers. Let's now review the criteria for a student to earn the New York State Seal of Biliteracy. A candidate must complete all requirements for graduating with a New York State Regents Diploma and must earn three points in English and three points in one or more other world languages according to the criteria set forth in the handbook. Here is the point matrix for English. Students must earn a total of three points using any combination of the criteria shown on this page. Each criterion is listed with its corresponding point value. 1a. Students may score 80% or higher on the New York State Regents Examination in English Language Arts. L's may also earn a point under this criterion by scoring 75% or above on two Regents exams other than English without translation. 1b. L's may achieve an overall score of 290 or better on the New York State English as a Second Language Achievement Test, also called the NISISLAT. 1c. Students may complete all 11th and 12th grade ELA courses with an average of 85% or higher. 1d. Students may earn a 3 or higher on an Advanced Placement AP English Language or English Literature Examination. L's may also earn a point under this criterion by scoring an 80% or higher on all components of the Test of English as a Foreign Language, or TOEFL. 1e. Students may earn two points by presenting a culminating project, scholarly essay, or portfolio that meets the criteria for speaking, listening, reading, and writing established by the District's Seal of Biliteracy Committee to a panel of two or more reviewers with at least intermediate high proficiency in English. Criterion 1E and 2E are used frequently by students pursuing the seal of biliteracy because these criteria can earn the students two points for each discipline. Schools are encouraged to consider embedding the culminating project into existing coursework. Think about the ELA 11 and 12th grade courses at your school. Is there currently a project that is part of one or both of these courses that could count as the Seal of Biliteracy culminating project? To qualify, a project must allow the student to demonstrate intermediate high proficiency in speaking, listening, reading, and writing English. Here is the point matrix for world languages. Students must earn a total of three points using any combination of the criteria shown on this page. Each criterion is listed with its corresponding point value. 2a. Students may complete a Checkpoint C level world language course with a grade of 85% or higher. This Checkpoint C course may be a one-year or a two-year course sequence. 2b. Students may provide transcripts from a school in a foreign country showing at least three years of instruction in the student's home or native language with equivalent grade average of B or higher. 2C. Students enrolled in a bilingual education program may complete all required Home Language Arts HLA coursework. 2D. Students may score at a proficient level on an accredited Checkpoint C World Language Assessment. We will cover these in the next slide. 2E. Students may present a culminating project, 
scholarly essay, or portfolio that meets the criteria for speaking, listening, reading, and writing established by the district's seal of validity committee that is aligned to the New York State Checkpoint C learning standards to a panel of two or more reviewers with at least intermediate high proficiency in the target language. As with the English Culminating Project, schools are encouraged to consider embedding the Culminating Project in world languages into existing coursework. Think about the Checkpoint C world language courses at your school. Is there currently a project that is part of these courses that could count as the Seal of Literacy Culminating Project? To qualify, a project must allow the student to demonstrate intermediate high proficiency in speaking, listening, reading, and writing the world language studied. This is the list of approved Checkpoint C assessments that can be used to earn a point towards Criterion 2D. Students must earn the minimum score indicated in order to earn the point. Students may take two AP exams in a world language, such as Spanish language and Spanish language and literature, and earn two points if they achieve the minimum required score for each exam. Developers of national exams are encouraged to submit their exam for consideration of inclusion on future iterations of this list. After a school has identified the cohorts of eligible students, they should identify the primary pathways that each cohort or individual student may take, that is, how they will earn their three points in each language. This planning is necessary, especially for students who speak a language that is not offered at the school as arrangements may need to be made to have these students take an approved Checkpoint C assessment in that language in order to earn the final point. From the cohort of eligible candidates, identify which students will need to take an approved Checkpoint C assessment. Most exams are given online in the spring with results being available very soon after the test administration. Any student taking an exam should be familiarized with its format and content by the student's advisor or the Seal of Biliteracy coordinator. As mentioned in an earlier slide, the Seal of Biliteracy must be offered to students at no cost. Therefore, if a student needs to take an approved Checkpoint C exam in a lower incidence language to earn a point, the cost of that exam should be borne by the district. This does not apply to the Advanced Placement AP or International Baccalaureate IB exams, which are part of separate coursework and programs in which the student elects to participate. The Seal of Biliteracy Committee, or SBC, shall include, but is not limited to, the following personnel. A world language teacher, an English language arts, or ELA teacher, an English to speakers of other languages, or ESOL teacher, a school counselor, and an administrator. There are a small number of schools who may not have any English language learners at the high school level. In this case, schools are encouraged to include an ESOL teacher on the SBC, but this is not required. If there are any L's at the high school level that may pursue the SEAL, it is required to have an ESOL teacher on the SBC. The role of the SBC is the following. To create a plan that includes, but is not limited to, details concerning committee recruitment and composition, communications, student advisement, evaluation, and presentation of awards. To create a timeline for all activities pertaining to the SEAL program, including but not limited to communications, a student advisement schedule, and dates for important benchmarks throughout the program year to develop a student application process, including an application form to be completed by interested students and returned to the SBC, to provide for the assignment of an advisor to each student accepted into the program to review program requirements and meet regularly with the student to review the student's progress, and to review and evaluate all coursework, assessments, and other work completed by each student to ensure criteria for the SEAL are met. We have now reached the end of the presentation of Module 1. To check the viewer's understanding of the information presented, we have prepared a closure activity. This can be completed individually or as a group. 
After reading each slide, please stop the video to complete the task. Task 1. Give an overview on the seal of biliteracy to a prospective student, parent, teacher, administrator, or community member. Discuss how you might alter this overview based on the intended audience. What does the audience need to know? If you are doing this as part of a larger group, consider having a few smaller groups present their overviews and then discuss what are the must-haves for such a speech. Please stop the recording now. Task 2. Provide a reason why schools should consider creating a seal of biliteracy program for their students. Please stop the recording now. Task 3. List the criteria that a student could meet to earn the seal of biliteracy at your school. Please stop the recording now. Task 4. Explain some of the elements of a basic timeline for schools to develop a SEAL program, such as the stages or deadlines. Please stop the recording now. Task 5. Give an example of a potential culminating project for world languages or English based on criteria 1E or 2E. Please stop the recording now. Task 6. Name the four required forms that must be submitted to OBEWL for the SEAL. Please stop the recording now. Congratulations on meeting all of the objectives set forth for Module 1. This module can be revisited at any time or shown to new staff as they join the SEAL of Biliteracy Committee. We would like to encourage you to share any additional questions you may have. Please forward any questions via email to candice.black at nysa.gov or to your local Auburn representative. This module series is designed as a practical guide to implement a seal of biliteracy program. Each subsequent module picks up where the prior one left off. Whether working within a school or with a consortium of schools, it is recommended that viewers consider completing the following homework assignments in preparation for the next module. 1. Discuss what you have learned in Module 1 with a direct supervisor, such as a principal, to make them aware this program is being explored. 2. If you intend to offer the SEAL in the current school year, be sure to officially request permission from the appropriate administrator to do so. This is often the assistant superintendent or superintendent via a building administrator or director. Three, investigate the possibility of giving a brief presentation on the seal of biliteracy to the Board of Education. Four, identify and recruit members of the seal of biliteracy committee. The following are required roles. Administrator, world language teacher, ELA teacher, ESOL teacher, if there are eligible L candidates, and a school counselor. Five, request data needed for the notification form. This can be done from a building administrator or a data specialist. Remember that data must be reported on all possible subgroups with numbers of students and any languages other than English spoken. Six, Print out and fill out the school notification form template, not the online form, and bring this to Module 2. 7. Bring a photocopy of a sample diploma to verify the SEAL sticker provided by OBEWL will fit. For more information on the SEAL, please contact us at candice.black at nysid.gov or via phone at 518-473. 7505. We can also arrange for a virtual or in-person visit to a school to meet with your SEAL of Biliteracy Committee. New York City DOE schools should contact the Division of Multilingual Learners at dml at schools.nyc.gov. The OBEWL New York State SEAL of Biliteracy website has a wealth of information on the SEAL and is easily accessible from the link on this slide or by visiting www.nysid.gov and typing seal of biliteracy into the search bar. 
every region of New York is serviced by one of eight regional bilingual education resource networks, or ARBRNs. These organizations can provide local support for a CELA biliteracy program. The link for each ARBRN is listed below. New York State Language ARBRN statewide, Capital District ARBRN at Quest R3 BOCES, Hudson Valley ARBRN at SW BOCES, Long Island ARBRN at Eastern Suffolk BOCES, Mid-State Arburn at OCM BOCES, Midwest Arburn at Monroe to Orleans BOCES, New York City Arburn at Fordham University, and Arburn West at Erie 1 BOCES. Thank you for participating in this module. We hope that this has been helpful. Please feel free to send any feedback on this module to the aforementioned email, as we are always looking to improve the end user experience. The members of the Seal of Biliteracy Task Force listed on this slide were instrumental in contributing to and reviewing this Seal of Biliteracy Guidance Toolkit. On behalf of the Office of Bilingual Education and World Languages of the New York State Education Department, the authors would like to thank them for their service.